It's all over the place, honestly. Dylan, you know, it's more about Dylan in this season, don't you think? Yeah, because it, like, focuses a lot on Dylan. And I yeah. feel like the show, like, the thing with season one is it had focus. Season yeah. two, it's like, we have this plot here, we have this plot here. Like, first of all, what yeah. I felt with season two is characters pop up and they yeah. disappear. They pop up for a few episodes, like, oh, we're building something, building this something. Oh, you're gone. Characters get thrown aside a lot. Um, for instance, I'm going to go on a quick rant on things that yeah. I thought about season two. First yeah. of all, the first episode, Bradley, she's just kind of thrown away. I feel like... Oh, yeah. But there's a really great scene with Bradley, though. Oh, it's a good scene. It's very uncomfortable at first, and I'm thinking, oh, boy. He's like, you're like 15, no, actually, you're 20. Yeah, my expression when she shot him, man. No, the first episode, <laughs> I liked it. I liked the way it set it up. I like how they delve oh, a little bit into the mystery. Yeah, and then after yeah. that, season two to me, it just, it goes too much all over the place. So Bradley gets written off the show, basically. She gets thrown aside. We got Norman and Norma and the Sheriff Romero questioning about the Blair Watson thing. Um, then, know, he get, then he meets this other girl. He completely, like, they completely disregard Emma throughout this whole season. You know, they were, like, best friends who did everything oh, together. Yeah. Like, I, I, and, and, like, they had a scene where, like, uh, Norma and, I mean, Norman... And they uh, uh, both made out, and, and it got cut from uh, the final cut of the show. And, and they said that they, they did that because there's going to be more of a love triangle between Norman and uh, Emma in season three. So we're going to get this like full circle kind of thing. Yeah, so. because season two, they brush that aside. Emma starts dating this pot smoking guy who just disappears. She's just gone. I don't know what happens to him this season. I. I'm not saying this because I forget, but he literally just disappears. Um, like, a lot of things, just plots just disappear to me. Like, for instance, like, there was that sex trade plot. Like, that was never, like, brought up again in season two. Remember, like, Jack Shelby, the sheriff who got killed in Romero, was like, okay, this, blah, 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 this trade's over. And then you had the creepy guy who got shot by Romero at season one. I thought, I would have thought that there'd be some repercussions to that. Um, then we got the drug storyline, which, like you said, it focuses a lot on Dylan in this season and his drug plot. And I'm not too interested in the drug plot. I care more about the Bates family than, you know, this drug plot business that's going on. That's what I kind of liked about season one is it was more about the Bates family. You know what I mean? You wanted to focus more on Norman than Dylan. Yeah, because, I mean, I don't really care too much for the drug plot of the town because I'm thinking it's just it just doesn't really excite me too much it's like the first season felt more intriguing because it was like more mystery but now that like the genie's out of the bottle kind of and it's just like oh it's just a standard drug plot issues I'm, wars I'm of the families they, i'm glad they went there because i saw what it was but now in season three i want to get i wanted to go back to to norman's life you know what i mean mm -hmm. less of feeling more about norman and and the love triangle between him and emma Hopefully we get Bradley back in season three. Hopefully we get like a full circle. Yeah. What about like the one girl, the Cody girl? She Norma shows up. And she had the drunk dad in that who just dies. <laughs> <laughs> what? Pushes them down the stairs. Whoa. The show. I'll give it credit. I think it's the funniest, like the most unintentional funny the show part. on TV. Yeah. Like I like the part where uh, Norma confronts her and she's. 
she like oh my god that scene is so awesome and and i love the scene where he pushes him down the stairs that was so well done like there are there are really good moments in season two uh, i mean like especially with Nor norman you know what i mean mm -hmm. but I, I think it's like this distraction with like dylan going on in the background yeah and then like, we got emma who's kind of thrown aside we got the drug yeah. storyline, like I said, and then we got the Talking Sheriff great, Romero storyline. We got the Cody storyline, which is basically what happens is they set up a storyline and they just throw it away. That's yeah. one thing I noticed a lot in season two. Like season one, of course, they can't fit everything in ten episodes. Something okay, they're gonna really build on this. I mean, a lot of season two deals with the mystery, the Blair Watson thing, which pretty much everybody saw coming, which was Norman and that. And then they're like trying to trick you, like okay, there's this character who we didn't really speak of. And now he's gone. Yeah, season one had, was very mysterious, which I like, and very creepy. Where season two is more like an action movie. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like, it's like a, yeah, that's what the kind of vibe I got, but. Yeah. I don't know, I mean, and then like, season two, I felt like it had a little bit too many characters. Yeah. Like, for instance, just like, okay, this girl Norman, Norma just meets at a singing thing is okay i'm gonna be your best friend now I'm like okay here's my brother sleep with him and she's like no i don't want to sleep with him but this guy he was like insanely like he was probably the creepiest most unintentional creepy character on the whole show because at one point norman's she instead of taking her out to dinner he has it at his house and like he's just standing at the door when she knocks like i've been waiting for you and then all of a sudden the funniest thing is she leaves because she's all emotional yeah. and then she argues with Norman about like his blackouts which is a big part of the season oh, and then, yeah that was so well done that part of the thing. and then they argue the, the argument was good but it's just like yeah. she tries to make him jealous which I'm thinking oh. you're making your son jealous of you sleeping with someone <laughs> that was funny like it's just like what a it's it's so funny they, by the way they teased the hell out of those two getting together somehow. The, okay, the, the perfect way to describe season two is an action slash comedy, and and season one is like uh, yeah, it's funny moments, but slapdash like horror. This one's like a comedy slapdash. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, season two, it's just unintentionally funny. Like yeah, oh, the, I mean that's good. Though. I mean like, like I don't take the I can't take the show seriously. I'm gonna be honest here because of just. Just the acting of, like, Freddie Highmore, because he's, he's like, the thing with him is he's like a woman in a man's body, kind of. Just the, just the way he, like, talks, just the way he, like, acts and stuff, just how, like, I'm very sensitive. Like, he's just so funny. And then his mom, just some of the things she does. Well, I, th I, I, I think that Freddie Highmore is just so good, though. I mean, I like how he captures Norman. It's, like, it's, I mean, Norman's... Uh, there's like two sides to Norman, you know. There's like, you know, like there when he goes into his blackouts, he becomes kind of like his mother, which mm -hmm. is why I think like Freddie Highmore is like the perfect person to do it because Freddie Highmore isn't scary. That's why it makes him the perfect Norman because he's like the boy next door. Like if I saw that kid, I'd be like, nah, that guy just kill anybody. <laughs> like I would be scared of him. You know what I mean? And that's kind of like why I think he makes a really good Norman date. But, but you know, like, I, I, I did like this season, season two, though. And I, I, I mean, I, I know it's not as good as season one, but there, there were some good things about it. I mean, I'm hoping that we do a little full circle with, you know, Bradley and everything. I mean, I really think you like Freddie Heimer. I think he does a really good job. I, I like his acting, you know? I, I just I think, think he's funny. Good. Like, he fits the Norman Bates character just fine. I'm just saying, I think he's just really funny with some of the things he says and does in the show. Hello, Mother. Um, yeah. One of the funniest things is, like, Norma's brother, who's, you know, the father like of Dylan. Howard gets kidnapped. That, that was probably really good. Yeah, all of a sudden he gets kidnapped, and then he just remembers everything. I'm like, okay. And then he just forgets it a moment later. But, like, the funny thing the was... Yeah, because I'm just like, well, it's kind of what I expected. I'm like, okay, they introduced this other character just to tease us, but then I'm like, okay, it's really that. But the thing that was, what was I, where was I going? Um, anyways, just, just some yeah. of the things he does, like when he goes to confront 
confront his uncle, which is also Dylan's dad. Yeah. The part where he's like goes to confront him and he's just like you. He like goes into his like flashback mode and he's like you raped me. You did all these terrible things to me. Like his uncle's just like, the hell are you talking about? Right. Yeah. Like, just some of the things he says and does, just his actions, and that are just really I find really funny. To tell oh, the yeah. truth. I mean, I, I think it is the best, funny mm -hmm. the best yeah. actor slash actress on the show is his mom. Yeah. She's, she's definitely, like, the best character on the show. But she's so funny, just the way she just, like, goes to psycho. And she's like, oh, please, sweetie, don't. Yeah, you know what? It's like, the di it's like a dynamic duo between him and his mom. You know what I mean? Like, when you get those two in a room together, you know, you've got, like, a really great scene. Yeah, those two work well together. I will say that those two mesh very well. Yeah, they work off each other. You know what I mean? You get the kind of lonely mm -hmm. kid, and you get that crazy ass mom. Like you know, it, it just works. I, 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 that's the only way to describe it. You mm -hmm. get like it's kind of like Jesse and like uh, Heisenberg kind of. You know what I mean? Like salt and pepper. You know, you get them together, and you get dynamite basically. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. so, like Norma, Norman. They, they like complete each other. <laughs> they, say it, they say that too in the show. Yeah. You complete me. We were nothing without each other. And I'm just thinking, you're like a weird mother-son couple. Yeah. Although I think Norma would not like go that far. I think Norman would. Oh, and like Norman, like she's just horrible to Norman. I mean, she doesn't help him with, you know, this ability. She tries to cover it up. I mean, that's the reason why... She I'm goes going. so far to screw things up. <laughs> it's so funny, because you, you just screw everything up for Norman, you know what I mean? Oh, sweetie, no! <laughs> <laughs> I just think he's just... I just think it's hilarious, just the way just the way it plays out, too. Because, yeah. man, I'm trying to remember a lot of things, because after all, the season ended, like, two, what, two, three weeks ago? Yeah. I, I mean, I can't wait for season three, because I, I know that, like, season three... It's going to probably go the darker route. Yeah, I, I want not... season three to have more focus. Because, like, season two, I think, was just too much all over the place. Yeah. I, I just like season one a lot more. I mean, season two... Season two was kind of, like, filling in the holes in season one. Oh, we got all these mysteries. Let's, let's fill all these holes in. So we don't they filled in a lot of them. Yeah. But at the same time, they kind of just... They threw... They set up things, and they just kind of, like, dropped them. You know what I mean? Like, no, but they got rid of things. So yeah, they got rid of a lot of things. Like, it's just like... That's what kind of just bugged me about Season 2 is, like, they just kind of really didn't, like, follow up on a lot of stuff. Like, the thing that just... From Season 1 that I was, like... The thing they didn't follow up on really was that, like, big thing that happened. Remember with the sex trade thing? Yeah. They didn't really follow up on that. That's one thing they... To me, they didn't follow up on. And it's and just you like... Know, the, Bradley is such a great character. I mean, you go on, like, the, the Bates Hotel website, like, the, the fans, they absolutely hate Bradley. She's like Skylar White and Breaking Bad. I mean, yeah, they like, just, like, like, you see the comments, like, holy Yeah, God. They, they, they hate her. It's yeah, just... I mean, it, I, I think they got rid of her because they know she's so controversial that when they bring her back in season three, everyone's going to be like, oh, my God, she's bad. Like, oh. It's yeah. Like, it just they, they got rid of her so they could bring her back later. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know what they're gonna do with season three. I mean, season two just wasn't really my favorite. I mean, it wasn't a terrible season. I just liked season one a lot more. I thought it had more focus. Um, didn't really follow up on things. They kind of just dropped, stopped developing. Like Bradley the Emma. Reminded me of girls I dated in the past. Oh. <laughs> Except that they don't kill people with guns. Okay. That you know of. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, that I know. But, you know, I'm just saying. That's why Bradley has an easily, like, hateable personality. Yeah, I mean, like, everybody can relate to, like, you know, like, some girl, you know, just like, you know what I'm talking about, right? You know, yeah, I know like, what you're talking your about. Heart into, like, two, you know, and, like, I want to see her come back, because, I mean, like, I, I hate her character, but she's so intriguing, you know what I mean? She's so... She's so real that that's why I want to see her character come back. I mean, we got the whole thing about Dylan. We know the whole drug trade. That's done with. Let's concentrate now on Now Dylan. Dylan's going to be like a kingpin, I yeah. guess. Let's concentrate on Norman 
in season three and get more, um, get much, you know, let's get back to that kind of like darker tone in season let's one. Let's make it more simple. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because that's the thing with a lot of things. They try and be like shows and like movies and that. They try and get too much going on. Where it's just like, sometimes you just gotta make things simple. Like Bates Motel, that's what made season one work more, was it was more simple. I, I hope that Bates Motel goes on for a long time. Because I would love to see how, like, Norman's character, like, changes through the seasons. Because, like, if he can age like he does in the, to, like, the original movie, or, like, let's just keep it for, like, five or five seasons, maybe. Like, I think that it would be interesting just to see his character, like, age, you know. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, and it would be very creepy too. I mean, it, it would be like blowing off the character kind of, and getting to that point where it becomes, you know, the cycle that we know. You know yeah, I mean? that we all know. Yeah, so I say bring back that, you know, more dark mystery tone. But I, I love the comical undertones, though, I gotta say. Yeah. yeah. Season yeah. one, really funny. It's... Yeah, so what are you gonna give out of what did I give season one? Like an eight out of ten? I'm gonna give season two a six point five out of ten. Six point five? I'm gonna give it a nine out of ten. I, I, I give the last one ten out of ten, I believe, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'm gonna give this one a nine. Uh, I I'm gonna admit that it's not perfect, okay? And I, I, like, there are a lot of things that could be improved, but I, overall I enjoyed it. I, I always wanted to know what was going to happen in the next episode. Um, the episode where uh, Norman got kidnapped, that means the suspense scene with, like, Bradley, um, like, you know, uh, shooting that guy. And it almost felt like season two was, like, almost too short. Like, it almost felt like... Yeah, that's the thing, they only have ten episodes, like, per season. Yeah, I mean, it, it felt so, like, season one felt longer than season two. Season two felt like, it almost like, it just ended. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. like, for, like, season two, like, fills out all the gaps, but I think season three is going to open new doors, and we're going to get back to that mystery kind of, like, dark undertones. I can't wait to see season three. I mean, I, I think we're going to get a lot going for it. I mean, I, I, I can't wait to see it. What about you? Um, I'm going to watch it, well, obviously, because I've already watched it. When I watched the show for a couple seasons, and I'm still somewhat intrigued, um, yeah. I want to continue sure, to find out where it's going. You, you love the comedy. Well, the show, like, I stopped taking it seriously Um, when just some of the scenes with Norman and Norma, I just think it's hilarious. I, it's not meant to be taken seriously. It, that's, well, or, or it is, like, uh, some people are taking it seriously. Me? I stopped taking it seriously, and I just enjoyed it for the comedy. But I, I love the I think the writing is great on the show because the the writers they don't want to take it seriously. They no, I think they I, I think they do, or maybe they're not. I don't know. Maybe it's by design. I think, I think they like to have fun with it. I think the writers like to have fun. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I I like shows like that. I mean, not every show uh, doesn't need its dark comical undertones. I mean, some shows need that. And Bates Motel is one of those shows that just needs that because, do you know what I mean? It just makes it much more interesting to watch. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And if a show can make you laugh or scream, then, you know, it's doing its job. It's like, and, that, and Bates Motel always keeps me kind of, like, interested, you know. So I hope that we get a full circle on season three, get back that mysterious kind of, you know, dark, dark undertone. You know what I mean? Okay. Well, I think that's going to wrap us up, Danny. All right. Well, have a great night, everyone. All right. Go check out Bates Motel Season 2. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Um, We're out.